Now, here's Michael Smirkanish. David Phillips covers military issues for the New York Times. He's a Pulitzer Prize winner, and he's got a hit new book. It's tremendous. I have read it. I highly recommend it. If it were not based in fact, you would think, now nah, Hollywood has taken this one too far, but it is. It's called Alpha. Eddie Gallagher and the War for the Soul of the Navy SEALs. Thanks so much for being here, David. I really appreciate your time. Glad to be on again. Thanks, Michael. So uh, there is a name. His name is Motaz Mohammed Abdullah, and he was 17 years old. Who is he? This is the guy that was the center of probably the biggest uh, military court martial in years, the court martial of uh, Navy SEAL Edward Gallagher. And the amazing thing part is, is this is the victim, a, a prisoner of war who was allegedly stabbed to death. And during the entire trial, which attracted pretty much every news outlet, attracted the attention of the president, no one knew the identity of the victim. They didn't even give him a name like John Doe to say that he, he had an identity, that he was a person with a family and, and a neighborhood. And so when I went to tell the story of this court martial, I knew that we had to try to track down that nameless person and figure out who he was. I think it would have been far less impactful if you hadn't tracked down all that detail and told his story and told us about his father, because instead it would have been some faceless, nameless ISIS member. Too easy to make them the enemy, right? Yeah, very easy to caricature. And, and uh, uh, you described the scene. There's, this was a subject of fascination. It's, it seemed like uh, some didn't even care who he was. Others wanted to see, well, this is a real life ISIS person. Tell the short version of that story, if you would. Who is he and how did he cross paths with Eddie Gallagher? I mean, basically, uh, Moataz was a, a local kid from Mosul who grew up more or less his entire life during war, whether it was during the United States invasion and occupation or, or the tumult afterwards and the invasion by ISIS, which took over that city in 2014. And he was, you know, in a lot of ways, a victim of circumstance. Uh, he was recruited as a young teenager by ISIS, even though his parents forbade him to join, even though they forcibly dragged him home. And at one point were so desperate, they tried to chain him up in the house to keep him from going to join again. Um, but he went out and he became a very low ranking foot soldier during the massive battle between ISIS and uh, the Iraqi army and the Americans. Uh, it was during that battle that he was wounded uh, by uh, the coalition and brought to a small group of SEALs that was led by Navy SEAL Chief Edward Gallagher. Now, at that point, what Gallagher's men say, and several of them say they, they witnessed this close hand, uh, Gallagher started providing medical care to this wounded fighter, which they thought was strange because he had never provided medical care to anyone else. And then after a few minutes, he, he took out a knife and, and stabbed Moataz. Uh, then he gathered every seal that was around, and they essentially took a trophy photo with Edward Gallagher holding his knife, uh, Moataz's body by the hair, and kneeling there with all of his men. He was acquitted of a murder charge, held accountable only for the taking of that photograph. Why? Well, uh, I think one of the reasons that he was acquitted was that uh, his defense attorneys did a masterful job of sowing confusion. But another is that every single person on the uh, jury pool was a male military member, and almost all of them had ground combat experience. So I think that they are predisposed to be sympathetic, to give the benefit of the doubt. I think if you had presented them the exact same uh, evidence, uh, except that the accused was a foreigner, an enemy, uh, they would have convicted him. But this is one of their own. But is it, it, what I was thinking as I was reading the book, David, is, is part of the thought process of those within the military who look at Eddie Gallagher, and certainly not all, because it took, I think, amazing courage for some SEALs to come forward and say, here's what we saw happen, um, is part of the thinking, well, what do you expect? You know, when, when you have someone like him 17 years in the rotation of training and combat, training and combat, training and combat, five foot eight, 165 pounds of muscle, aggressive, the word most usually used to describe him, this is what you're going to get. You know, shit happens. It's war. 
I, I, I totally accept the shit happens, it's war uh, argument. And I think that, that there's even an argument that, that maybe Eddie Gallagher, given how much service he's done and how many deployments he has had, sort of mercy and clemency. However, where I don't agree is that uh, if we're going to have that conversation about what happens to our war fighters when we ask them to do this year after year, first we have to have a real conversation about what happened. And I don't feel like, from my reporting, that happened uh, during this trial. There was a lot of talk about that he never did it, that all the men who turned him in were lying. And it became really sort of a, a, a polarizing political litmus test of whose side were you on. I wanted to get all that crap out of the way and say, here's what, you know, to the best of my ability uh, and all of my research, I can tell you happened. So then let's have that discussion of what it means to our warfighters. In your book, you make reference to Heart of Darkness. As I was reading your book, I was thinking of Apocalypse Now. Apocalypse Now was the Coppola movie, Martin Sheen is looking for Colonel Kurtz. Heart of Darkness, my recollection is, I loved it at the time, was made by Coppola's wife and she's documenting all the difficulty that they had in making Apocalypse Now. So hopefully I got that right, but but it really doesn't stack up. In other words, you're not saying in the book that he's Colonel Kurtz, that he went crazy when he gets to Mosul. I mean, that, that is not, as I reflect on the book, it's not as if you're saying a switch flipped, or am I wrong? Uh, what his men described to me was that they really felt like a switch flipped. Now, whether they were noticing something for the first time or, or whether there really was a marked change, I guess we don't know. But what they say is as soon as he... Uh, got into Mosul, which was this really coveted assignment because all the SEAL teams knew it was going to be a big fight. And when you sign up to be a SEAL, you don't do it so you can sit at home. Uh, and what they say is that pretty much uh, immediately he became obsessed with, with uh, death, with the possibility that people were going to be seriously injured, and really unconcerned that it might mean um, that people were going to get hurt along the way. And his guys just thought he was acting crazy. He was lauded as a hero in certain quarters. I mean, here, here's the data that you have in Chapter 9. The official statistics from Mosul told the story of the kind of savage combat that the SEALs hadn't seen in years. 189 enemy positions obliterated, 13 vehicle-borne IEDs destroyed, 546 enemy fighters killed. Incredible, career-making, total badass. But, of course, the flip side interpretation is he's a war criminal. Right, right. And uh, I think that there are two things going on. One, it really was the, a, a level of combat that, that a platoon had not seen in a long time. Uh, and at the same time, what, what SEALs reported is that their leaders sort of saw that as uh, cover to kill whoever he wanted. Now, one of them told Navy investigators he killed pretty much anything that moved. Uh, old men, women, children, uh, it didn't matter to him. And the question is, is, is he a cold-blooded killer or is he someone who lost his marbles after multiple deployments or both? And I think that's still an open question that you can have while reading this story. On a particular day, you have him coming back to camp and saying, I just killed 14. Yeah, yeah. You know, what's funny is, so Edward Gallagher starts, he's supposed to be basically the coach of the team, the person who's sitting back directing everyone looking at strategy. Instead, right away, what his men say is, is he spent nearly all of his time behind the sniper rifle. He neglected his leadership duties and essentially tried to get as many kills as he could. And he would come down at the end of the day from various sniper hides with these reports of high numbers of killings. And the guys kind of took it as a joke. They thought that he was essentially lying to build up his credibility and they didn't take him seriously. Until one by one, uh, different people started to see his, his shots connect with uh, civilians that, you know, from their point of view, in no way were legit targets. Unarmed people, old people, women going to get water by the river. And they realized, well, maybe part of, of his bravado, part of all these claims is real, and he's just shooting anyone he can. Turn off the ATACs. What's an ATAC and why would you want it turned off? This is a really interesting part of the story. So Mosul is a super complex battle space, an urban maze that not only has enemy fighters and Iraqi army, but also all sorts of different coalition troops and dozens of aircraft flying over ready to do airstrikes. 
it's very important if you're an American service member to have the friendlies know where you are so you don't accidentally get killed. Uh, so each one essentially carries a smartphone with a, a tracker on it so that, that the good guys can see where the other good guys are. But Edward Gallagher, the rule from going where he wanted to go, he fight, and he wasn't allowed to under the rules. So he told his guys, hey, turn off the trackers. We're going to go dark so that we can go right up to the front and really mix it up. And at first, the guys were totally cool with this. They're SEALs. They're not going to shy away from getting in a fight. But then at one point, uh, they got to a place where one of the SEALs was shot and nearly killed. And Edward Gallagher, what they say is he refu refused to call in a medical evac because he didn't want to get caught in the forbidden zone. And they realized, hey, this has like real dire consequences if, if he is unwilling to risk his hide to save one of us. And Eddie Gallagher would say, not only are these a bunch of lies, but Eddie Gallagher and military folks who support him would say, this is really evidence of a generational divide. Th these are an, a new breed of warrior who need to be coddled uh, right. and worked, right? So, That's what so, right, it's important to note that Edward Gallagher was charged with murder and attempted murder, and he was acquitted on all those charges. He is right now a free man. And his defense has always been, hey, I didn't do it. It's, this isn't fog of war stuff. This isn't like an, an accidental shoot where I was trying to make a good shot and it had a bad outcome. This is just my guys framing me and making it up. And the reason they did it is that I uh, was hard on them. I expected them to act like seals and they were cowards instead. And in order to hide their cowardice, in order to cover up what happened in Mosul, uh, uh, they created a story that, that led to me being charged with murder. Now, I have to say, as a journalist, like, if that was true, that's a hell of a story, and I would have reported it. And I certainly, like, looked for it, and I didn't find any evidence of it anywhere. You, you sound like me talking about uh, climate change, saying that if it were all a hoax, wouldn't that be the best book you could ever write? Expose I would write that book. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, one other aspect of this, we're not giving it all away for free. By the way, the book is called Alpha, and the author is David Phillips. Former President Trump totally, people will remember this, totally embraced Eddie Gallagher and his cause. You've got them together at Mar-a-Lago. I'm sure many of us remember how that whole scene played out. Say something about that. Yeah, it was really amazing. Like while Eddie Gallagher was going through this, this, uh, uh, these charges, about to face trial, but still uh, awaiting the, the trial, his family went repeatedly onto Fox and other conservative news outlets and basically, with you know, without any uh, pushback from any of the hosts, gave, repeatedly gave this infomercial on how Eddie Gallagher is a hero and should be pardoned. And of course, the the person they were trying to sell it to was the commander in chief who had pow pardon power, President Trump. And whatever he saw in Edward Gallagher, he liked, and he really became an outspoken advocate of him. He moved him out of uh, uh, confinement before trial, even though the military said, "Don't do this." Uh, he hinted that he was going to uh, pardon him even before he went to trial. We don't know because he was acquitted whether he would have stepped in afterwards. But, but afterwards, he is actually acquit uh, convicted of a very small uh, charge, taking a photo with a body. And the president stepped in and, and reversed the, the charges. So uh, I think what he was saying to the American people is like, hey, even if this guy did what people said he did, uh, it, it doesn't matter. Like, I'm going to stand by him. David, if I had not seen the jacket of the book and if I did not know what he looked like and I were to speak to a composite artist after concluding your book, this is the guy I describe. He is central casting seal, chiseled draw, a jaw, right? Handsome. He's like Popeye for crying out loud. He's yeah. exactly what you'd expect him to be. You know, and I think that's why he was such a powerful brand on uh, both social media and conservative media. Like, he is this guy that you want to like. He's a Navy SEAL. They're heroes, right? He's the guy who is willing to step up and volunteer and kick in doors and, and harm the people who would otherwise do us harm. And, and you look at him, and you're right. He's a beautiful human being. He looks like everything we want to expect is good. And uh, what his men say is that they were, were taken in by this image for a long time, too, until they saw, you know, firsthand the, the terrible things that they say he was doing in, in Iraq. 
Quick final question. If you applied this level of scrutiny to any other, I don't know what the lingo is, squad, unit, group, could you find similar stories? In, in other words, have you just exposed what the culture is generally, or is this a person-specific tale? I think that there are larger problems and that hallowed image of the SEALs is, is covering them up. Right now, uh, Australia is going through a very painful, broad investigation of its version of the SEALs, the SAS. And there have been a, a number of murder charges filed, a, a very public investigation. We've never done anything like that. Uh, and, and so, you know, the only answer is, you know, to, is there anything else there is, you know, we don't know because we've never looked. David Phillips, the book is called Alpha. Thank you so much for your willingness to come and discuss it. I really appreciate it. Always good to talk to you, Michael. Thank you. Thank you.